Hello, everybody. Today, I will be discussing the article, Looking Beyond Language, an Examination of College Literacy Readiness of Students from Refugee Backgrounds um, by Megan A. Hoff. This was a very enlightening experience for me, um, one in which I, I don't, I've never gone in this depth through an article, and I really appreciated the checklist. Um, but it was a great experience going through this, you know, in this format, looking at the article and getting this experience relatively new for me. Um, to see these articles, but it's really, really something that I think I could see myself growing by doing so. But in this particular article, um, you know, there's two strengths and two weaknesses that we're going to discuss today. And the first strength is around ethical considerations. I was really impressed um, by the positionality section that the author included. I'm not sure how normal that is, but I hadn't seen that before. But it was something that I really, really appreciated. Um, you know, it, it certainly had this section and explored biases, which I thought was really interesting. And in addition to that, the author mentioned that they kept a reflective journal. So that's something that I thought was kind of neat. Um, and I'm not sure how widely, um, how wide that practice is, but it's something that I think is important for researchers to do. Uh, they discuss the similarities and differences between their own life and their own experience uh, with the participants and that with the participants, which I thought was interesting because it's one thing to explore only the differences, but there are also some similarities there as well, which might, you know, provide some insight from the researcher's perspective. So I thought that was neat that they kind of talked about that. Um, in terms of the methodology, uh, I, I feel that there was clear logic in what they did. Um, the subtitles made it easy to follow. Um, it seemed like the organizational structure of the article was something that helped me to kind of follow it because the subtitles were very clear and they were pervasive throughout. And that's kind of, it seemed to make it easier to read. I've seen some articles that just have a lot of text um, and this was kind of bite-sized and it made it, I think, something that the flow was better and it was easier for a reader to follow what was going on. Um, and the problem statement was pretty simple and pretty understood, uh, pretty straightforward. So I feel that that's a strength. Um, other articles that I've seen don't have that same level of just kind of sectionality. Um, and so I felt that that was kind of something that helps readers to follow, especially when looking through multiple articles. Um, one of the critiques that I that I had was just basically around um, the scope of generalization. Um, I, I chose that particular, from the checklist, that particular critique. But while I felt that I, I could follow the problem and while I felt that I they were coming close to um, identifying reasons, I also was left at the end not knowing if those were similar problems that students who weren't refugees would also have. And so while they, they did identify some of those problems and, and get to, towards that end, I, I kind of was left with the logic um, being that, who, what's to say that those wouldn't be similar problems that all students would have, not necessarily refugees. So I, I don't know if I found the right critique, but that's the one that I feel closest matches that. Um, and then, you know, they also t discussed about the digital text quality. Um, and so, you know, that's an example of one of those things where is that that might be an issue that all students have, not necessarily refugees or a particular type of learners. That just seems to be pervasive. So that's an example of how I wasn't sure if the logic was met at the end. So that's a critique. Again, I'm not sure if I'm articulating that well or, or what would be the right way to express that. But that was definitely a critique that I had. Um, and then the overall writing, one of the critiques that I have is that the headings and subheadings underscore the logic of inquiry presented in the article. Basically, um, while I did like the sectionality and I did feel that it was easy to follow because of the different sections and how it was bite-sized, I also wasn't sure that they agree with, they, there were certain different elements from the article that all were given subtitles and it wasn't like there were certain sections. It wasn't just about methods, positionality. It also kind of just talked about data. It gave basically all elements of the organization the same weight. And so as a result of that, you know, it kind of made things difficult for me to understand why they chose those particular sections the way they did. I felt like maybe a table of contents might have been beneficial for me to understand that. 
Um, maybe the elements of the study could have been given subtitles and then they could have separated out the rest. But it just seemed that to have the entire article broken into those equally weighted sections, while on the one hand making it easier to follow and organizationally easier to understand what they were doing, on the other hand, it kind of made it confusing because it didn't seem to allot any more significance to some areas than others. And it was kind of all just given the same blanket treatment. So I, I put that under overall writing because while it was a, a positive, the organization was also kind of a negative and that it might lead to confusion. Um, you know, some of the takeaways from this experience was that it was difficult to read this this level critically um, and that comes i think with practice um, while i'm grateful for the experience i realized how daunting the task is to kind of read reread and um, pull out certain sections to really judge and evaluate um, an article based on its merit based on its methodology that's something that is a skill um, you know a lot of the reading that i've done in the past has been more of kind of you go through beginning to linear type of reading and i definitely noticed myself kind of doing more of a close reading, more of a back and forth and trying to really uh, parse out the importance. So it, it was definitely a new skill, one that I'm excited about learning, but I, I understand that there's a learning curve involved. Um, and definitely, you know, kind of pull that bird's eye view, kind of look at holistically the article as a whole. Um, and that that's kind of a different way of approaching, I guess, reading and learning. So um, that was definitely a takeaway I had. Um, you know, in terms of qualitative analyses like case studies, one question that I have is what separates that from being anecdotal? Um, just evidence, uh, you know, wh whether you're doing three case studies or to what level, can you really make it more of, uh, I guess, a scientific inquiry versus just what those particular student experiences are? And so that's something that I'm kind of keeping in the back of my mind as I'm reading through a lot of these articles that have qualitative research is just how to make that something more than just anecdotal. And so I think that's something that I'm trying to really, that gets, I guess, into the methodology. Um, and really, I think understanding even just how they, they approach these different, this research and what, you know, at what level is that something that can be really seen as conclusive to what they're trying to, to approach, to, to research and discover. Um, the article seems to discover more specific research problems for the future. I think that's, I think, maybe the goal. And I noticed that towards the end, they kind of discovered like what might implicit cultural understandings restrict otherwise resilient college students. That's one of the findings that they had. And uh, my first impression was that they should have maybe started with that. And then that could have been the problem that they, the research problem that they pursued. But then I began to realize, well, maybe that's the goal of some of these articles is to just kind of funnel it down to get to that next step and then allow for them to do further research later that is more specific in nature. Um, and so that was kind of an interesting takeaway, uh, something that I will approach articles with in the future. And then um, I'm very appreciative of the Evaluating Educational Research Checklist. Um, I read through the article without looking at the checklist first, the first time, and then the second time after looking at the checklist, it certainly taught, it was like a tool uh, that a pedagogical tool that helped me understand how to approach articles. So I think this was a really good exercise. I really, really liked that document. Um, and it kind of opened up many of the different ways in which research can be evaluated. Um, I almost took for granted that it would always be strong research, you know, if it's an article, if it's published. But this kind of really helped me start to think that there is room for improvement, how to look for that through that critical lens. And so I feel this was a, a good exercise. And I really, really like that checklist, one that I will, you know, maybe keep on my side moving forward, looking at different articles. But nevertheless, thank you very much. Um, I, this was a great experience, great learning experience. And I look forward to your feedback and giving feedback to your videos as well. Thank you.